If you've been following Bike of the Year on Road CC, you'll know we've published our winners in all the different categories over the past week and a half. And if you haven't, well, there's a link to follow in the description below. But our tech team have been beavering away behind the scenes to take the best of those bikes and put together a top 10. And now it's time to run through those bikes. It is time for the Road CC Bikes of the Year for 2020 and 2021. Just to be clear, only bikes that have been reviewed on Road CC or our sister sites, Off-Road CC and e-bike tips are eligible for the bike of the year. These are bikes that we've independently tested and that we really rate. Some of your favorites might not be in the top 10 and of course everyone's got an opinion about what the best current bikes are. So please do let us know what your favorites are in the comments below and anything you think we should review in 2021. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos. Okay, 10 bikes to get through, so let's get going. Right, let's kick off that top 10 with an absolute banger of a superbike. The Specialized Athos Pro Otegra GI2 at 7,250. To be honest, this bike was a bit of a surprise when it launched. Specialized had released the Tarmac SL7, a do-it-all superbike, to replace both the Tarmac SL6 and the Venge. And it seemed like all the talk would be about that bike. But then came the Athos. Not designed for the World Tour teams, nothing aero, just all about the ride. Specialized say it computer analyzed 100,000 frame designs to come up with the Athos and well whatever they did they really nailed that handling. The performance of this bike is simply outstanding. Straight out of the box it's below the UCI 6.8 kilo weight limit but it's not just about the weight. The balance of the bike is spot on and all of the kit is really dependable. It's an expensive bike for sure, but if ride quality and aesthetics are higher on your list than aero performance, then the Specialized Athos is one for your shortlist. Maybe aero performance is high on your list, and if it is, well, the Oro Venturi STC coming in at number nine would be a great pick. We tested the SRAM Red ETAP version of this bike at 4599, and the new Venturi takes all of the excellent qualities and attributes of the previous bike, but comes with smoother lines thanks to fully integrated brake hoses and some great looking cockpit components. The Venturi looks fast standing still, and it's a bike that loves to be ridden full gas it absolutely motors along on the flat. The frame is made using spread toe carbon. That's what the STC stands for, which means that the carbon fiber is arranged in flat wide tapes. Think of it as ribbons that are woven together. The idea being that this reduces weight and increases stiffness. If the speed and stiffness are to be expected from a bike like this, well, the surprise then is the comfort. The bike's designed around 28 millimeter tires and the Venturi rides that line of being taught without being harsh just about perfectly. You can take your pick of builds from Shimano, Campagnolo and SRAM so you get plenty of choice and we loved the ETAP wireless shifting. In at number eight is the giant TCR Advanced SL0 disc at 9499. Now this is another top of the range offering and it's an absolute beaut. The new TCR is another lightweight bike that's been made more aerodynamic, a key theme over the last year. Made using a new higher modulus carbon filament, the new bike is lighter and stiffer and it uses truncated ellipse tube profiles to reduce drag. Our test bike weighed just 6.7 kilos with Kadex tubeless deep section wheels and that was a large sized frame too obviously not mine <laughs> so plenty of tech but the takeaway is the ride this is a world tour race bike and it's exceptionally stiff and responsive chuck the bike around brake hard do whatever you want in fact you won't cause the front end to waver or fluster it's more than confidence inspiring it's almost freaky actually this is a bike that's good enough for the Tour de France start line so that is all your excuses you used up but I do love an excuse still. <laughs> 
In at number seven is something a bit different. It's the Cannondale Topstone Carbon Lefty One, which retails at 6,600. Offroad CC gave this their benchmark bike award, and that means it's a bike that sets the technical and performance standards against which the rest are judged. It's money no object, it's a dream bike if you like to mix things up on and off road. The Top Stone is a bike for riding fast on any kind of surface, with a monoblade lefty fork at the front and a shock-free suspension system in the rear triangle. It's definitely a technological powerhouse, but it's also brilliant to ride. It's a light, fast gravel ripper, and the suspension is a real benefit for riding on mixed surfaces at speed. SRAM's ETAT wireless shifting gives a faultless performance too. Cannondale are pushing the boundaries with the Topstone Carbon Lefty One. There's nothing really like it out there, in fact. It's not just a look at me bike, though. It's genuinely fun, and it's a fast bike that will cope well with a wide range of surfaces. <music> Okay, let's move a few rungs down the ladder. In at sixth is the Ribble Endurance AL Disc 999. It might not have those super bike looks or lightweight, but it's a brilliant budget bike that's ideal for winter training, commuting, club runs, short blasts, or long rides. It's even quick enough for entry level racing if you fancy a girt that too. The Endurance AL Disc is built around a double butted alloy frame and a full carbon fork. The relaxed geometry gives it a stable ride, but it still feels quick and fun to ride. It's a really practical bike too, with room for mug guards and disc brakes for great stopping power in any weather. The Shimano Tiagra build that we reviewed gives great performance for not much money, and you can use Ribble's online bike builder to custom build a bike that's perfect for you. The Endurance AL Disc is a great bike that punches well above its weight in terms of performance and value. Fifth place goes to a frame set, the Condor Fratello Disc Through Axle, which retails at 1199. It's a beautifully crafted frame set that delivers an awesome ride feel, along with the stunning looks. Although it manages to keep much of that traditional winter bike style, including a straight through inch and an eighth head tube, it's brought up to date with disc brakes and through axles for sharp handling and confident stopping. The Fratello frames are handmade in Italy and the finished quality is absolutely stunning. The custom-drawn Columbus Spirit triple-butted steel frame is paired with a carbon fork and the ride quality is exceptional. The endurance geometry splits the difference between fast and upright perfectly. There's practical touches too. The white decals are reflective and the frame has room for 32mm tyres with mug guards, so it's perfect for those winter base miles. If you're looking for something with classic looks but a bang up-to-date ride, look no further. Fourth place goes to the Triban RC520 Women's Disc Road Bike. At 749, this bike is offering some serious value for money, and it's rightly so our sub thousand pound bike of the year. It's an incredibly versatile bike that can handle the rigors of commuting, leisure riding, even a bit of gravel if you feel like heading off the beaten path. Now, the aluminium frame and carbon bladed fork of the RC520 are matched with a Shimano 105 group set, which is serious spec for this money. You even get TRP's hydraulic HYRD brakes, which is a real coup. With 28mm tyres, you're sorted for the lanes and the odd byway, and the RC520 is built to last. The frame, fork, stem and handlebar all have a lifetime warranty. Everything on the bike is reliable and built to last. It's not the lightest bike, but if you're looking for a bike with a comfortable position and good quality components, it's hard to go wrong here. It's such a bargain that you do need to get in quick when they come into stock on Decathlon's website. In third place is Off-Road CC's Gravel Bike of the Year, the Ribble CGR 75 SRAM Apex 650B retails for 1549 and it's a brilliant machine. It's equally adept on the tarmac or a fire road with the combination of a steel frame and fat 650B tires giving comfortable cruising ability no matter what surface you're on. It feels just as happy weaving in and out of the traffic as it does at the end of a long full laden day of bike packing and there's not many bikes that are that versatile. 
Rival makes lots of CGR bikes. Um, there are alloy and titanium versions too, and even an e-bike. But the Reynolds 725 frame wins the day for us for its combination of classic looks and modern versatility. There's all the luggage points you'd expect from a modern gravel bike, plus through axles and clearance for big off-road tires. Our SRAM Apex build performed brilliantly, but of course Ribble's bike builder means you can pick the spec you want and have it custom built just for you. And whatever you pick, the CGR 725 will be a great value all rounder. Runner up this year goes to our super bike of the year, the specialized S-Works Tarmac SL7 Dura-Race DI2. And what a bike it is. At over 10 grand, it is certainly expensive. We're not gonna argue there, but the performance is amazing. The Tarmac has always been the lightweight road bike in specialized range, but the aim with the SL7 was to get it as aerodynamic as possible without adding weight. And the project has been a big success. Specialized say that the Tarmac SL7 is so aerodynamically efficient that there's no longer a need for the Venge aero bike anymore. That's how good it is. As a complete package, this S-Works is phenomenally efficient and fast. The SL7 hasn't sacrificed comfort. It's a Peloton ready race machine, but it's firm without any irritating harshness. Very light, stiff bikes can sometimes feel a little flighty over rough road surfaces at high speed, but the tarmac never does. The whole bike feels beautifully balanced. The SL7 really does deliver on all the attributes you'd want in a top flight race machine. Speed, stiffness, handling, and comfort. Yes, this model is very expensive, but SL7 start at half the price of this 10 and a half thousand pound top end build. So that's the countdown, and now it's time to reveal which bike has won Road CC's overall bike of the year. For that, it's over to Liam and Dave in the Road CC Clubhouse for the grand unveiling. Over to you guys. Ah, oh, thanks, Becca. Ah, welcome to our club room. Yeah. We love our club room. We do, don't we? Yeah. And here it is, oh. the Road CC Bike of the Year 2020-21. Under the very sparkly blanket. I shall do the big reveal. Oh, okay. Ooh. Drum roll. Ta-da! It's the giant TTR Advanced Pro One Disc. Absolutely, £3,799 and really all the race bike you can yeah. need. Yeah. Amazing bike. So let's go into a bit of a deep dive into this bike. Now, you may have seen on Road TC, and if you haven't seen, there's a link to the review in the description below that we also reviewed Giant's top end bike, which is the Advanced SL Zero Disc. Now, that retails at £9,500 for the build that we had. A lot of money. But this bike has taken a lot of that and trickled it down into a much more affordable platform. So in common with a lot of bike manufacturers, Giant are moving away from the whole dichotomy of aero bike, light bike, and they're moving to something more in the middle. And the TCR is that all round bike. So what is the same between this and the higher end model? Well, the tube profiles are the same. You can see obviously there's, there's a lot of similarity between them. So. Giant have uh, used a truncated airfoil profile a lot for these bikes. They've used it on the down tube and on the fork here and on the um, seat tube as well. The fork has been widened. That's a trend we've seen quite a lot over the last few years. Um, the Pinarello Bullied. Yeah, that goes one. back a while, doesn't it? Uh, and also the Hope Track bike with the, oh, with huge. the huge uh, width in the fork to improve the airflow between the wheel mm. and, and the fork. So that's that's changed from before. The bike has been designed to work aerodynamically with a bottle. Okay. So this down tube is very wide, 65 it is mil wide. It is a chonky boy, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> it is. It's big. So that smooths the airflow around the bottle if you're using one. What's going on inside this frame? Okay, well, the most obvious change is that uh, on the top end bike, Giant use an integrated seat post. So the seat post is part of the frame, all built together. Uh, here it's a standard um, seat post that slots into the frame. So that's the main difference. Underneath the surface, it's a different carbon layer. So uh, for this frame, Giant uses uh, a Torre T700 carbon. And on the, on the more expensive bike, they use T800 and another one, another carbon that they won't tell us what it is. Is that gonna be a bit of magic? A special carbon. Yes. Now, in terms of how the two frames compare, Giant have got some numbers. And we, we know that you love, like numbers very much. We love numbers. So, 
In terms of the pedaling stiffness, this bike is 88% as good as the top end bike. In terms of torsional stiffness, it's 92%. In terms of lateral stiffness, it is 79%. Oh. So in terms of actual real world things, uh, what does that kind of mean? Well, um, it means that it's not quite as stiff as the SL0, but in real terms, it's not really a difference that you're gonna notice. Okay, so for a smaller rider like myself, um, I might not pick up, because I'm not generating huge amounts of power. But for bigger riders like yourself and Matt Brett, who I know has also ridden this, are you guys feeling that? I mean, even for a bigger rider like me, I'm, I'm 92 kilos, so I'm, I'm, I'm big for a racing cyclist. Um, I've ridden these two bikes back to back. Um, they do feel different in, in how they ride. So the integrated seat post of the Giant make, gives it a slightly different feel at the back. And the fact that it's got lighter wheels gives it a different kind of pickup. But in terms of the actual core stiffness of the bike, even when I'm going full gas, you know, even when I'm properly giving it a sprint, it's not really a difference that I can pick up, no. So for the likes of us kind of general riders, uh, we like racing a bit as well, we're more than happy with this kind of model. Aren't Absolutely, we? I mean, for me as a, as a third cat racer, this is as much bike as I could ever need. I, I wouldn't be able to justify spending more really. Mm. And you know, up until the point where people start giving you bikes to ride because you're that good, it's hard to see how you could, uh, how you could go wrong with something like this. For and a privateer racer, it's perfect. Let's be honest, when we get ourselves involved in one of those Cat 3 crashes that are so famous, when carbon is breaking all around you, 3,800 versus the 9, 9 grand. 500. Yeah. So the geometry on the new TCR is, it, there are some small changes, but it's the same as the old model, if that makes sense. So the bottom bracket has been dropped by two millimeters, but Giant has given room for two millimeter wider tires. So those bigger tires need to be compensated for. You can get 32 millimeter tires in there. 25's fitter than standard for a race bike. But essentially, it's the same as the old frame. In terms of the position of this bike, um, it has a stack to reach ratio of 1.45. Ooh, now what does that mean? So stack to reach is a way of measuring basically how aggressive the frame is. So the higher the number, the shorter and more upright it is. Mm. Now 1.45 is about where the market is in terms of how what a race bike is. So it's not especially aggressive. Um, you used to see quite a lot of race bikes that would be under 1.4, um, 1.45 was more kind of an endurance kind of position. But now most of the major race bikes are in that kind of area. And you know, this is, this is sharing the same geometry as the SL0, which is a team bike, you know, it's a world tour mm. bike. The reason that it's changed this way is because for most people, that's a better position. And we're the yeah. ones that actually buy the bikes. We're the ones that are buying and riding the bikes. They're getting given them, and you'll see stems that kind of come, come out <laughs> to about somewhere around yeah. here to get, you know, they, the pros will ride smaller frames, they'll put big stems on them with long drops just to get lower, um, because they can maintain, it's a more aerodynamic position and they can maintain it mm. for, for the amount of time they need to in, you know, a five hour Tour de France stage race. For you and me, mm. we'd be, it'd be murder for us after about 10 minutes probably. Um, and the design of bikes has changed to reflect that. So it's changed to more accommodate people like you and me who mm. want nice bikes, but don't have the lower back for so it. so flexible. Yeah. No. It, it's, it's a more attainable position, isn't it? Is it is a more attainable position, but it's still a fast position. And also this is a more aerodynamic bike than before. So you're getting a, a gain there. So it's all a balancing act really. Yeah. Now, one of the features that is actually my favorite feature on the bike is the group set Altegra R8020. It has mechanical shifting, hydraulic braking, and it is Perfect. I really love this group set. It's a brilliant group set. It's got everything you need. Um, brilliant feel, good range of gears, fantastic brakes. And if it was my money, it's the it's the group set I'd choose. Funnily enough, I might have gone for the DI2 version of this group set, but 
we're getting off track. Um, the absolute gem at the center of this group set is a, quite a surprising find at this price point. We've got a dual-sided power meter. Yeah, Giant's Power Pro power meter, which is based on the Altegra chain set and retails on its own at 800 pounds. Yeah. So yeah. it's an 800 pound power meter on a 3,800 pound bike. Really good. And, you know, brilliant, double-sided, very accurate, and also based on a, a chain set that is, you know, industry standard. Yeah. And the ratios, the gear ratios that we've got here, I think we both agree that the setup here is perfect for this type of bike. Yeah, so 5236 at the front and 11 to 30 at the back. So lots of good gears for fast riding and cruising and climbing. So you've got some good low gears there. And then when you're barreling down the other side, obviously you've got the assurance of hydraulic brakes on there as well. And these brakes are brilliant. Yeah. I've, uh, this is the first year that I've had disc brakes on the road and it has been so welcome, especially in the winter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, it, at this time of year when it's raining, there's grit on the road, you've got your carbon wheels on, mm. you don't want to be wearing them down. No, no. Right, so let's talk about the wheels because on a bike like this, uh, three to four thousand pounds, the wheels are often a place where a brand will look to make a bit of a saving. Yeah. On those bikes, I mean, for me especially, those wheels need to be subbed out pretty much instantly, and that adds to your costs. Here, though, we're not talking about that. No, absolutely not, because these um, SLR 142mm carbon wheels are really, really good. Um, they're stiff and they're light. Uh, they're only 1,450 grams a pair. That's impressive. Yeah, and they are tubeless ready and set up tubeless out of the box. And it's a hookless rim as well. That hookless rim has a 19.4 millimeter internal width. That's gonna work perfectly with your 25 to 28 mil tire that conventionally, you're probably gonna be running on a bike like this. Yeah, absolutely. And it comes out of the box with Giant's Gavia Course 125 mil tires, which are, you know, really good all-rounders. And they come set up tubeless, oh and I can't explain the amount of faff that that saves all around a brilliant package for the money. So I guess that only really leaves finishing kit and yep. we'll start at the back end. Giant's Fleet SL saddle. This is one that I've had on test this year. I got on with it from day one. It's kind of a short nosed design. Giant hasn't gone crazy though. So the rear end, while it's wide, it doesn't kick out massively. The central channel is quite nice and wide. Yeah, I've just got on with it from day one. Yeah, I'm the same. I mean, I've put in some miles on this bike and to be honest, I never really even noticed it. I mean, that's pretty much what you want from a saddle, isn't it? Yeah. And at the front end, we've got Giant's alloy finishing kit, so an alloy stem and bars. Um, they were stiff and comfortable. I didn't really have any problems with them at all. There's a little bit of upgrade potential there if you wanted to make the bike slightly lighter further down the line. Um, not necessarily something I'd change. No, um, and the bar tape is quite a surprising find. Yeah, so again, you know, out of the box, sometimes the bar tape on a bike at this kind of price is a little bit underwhelming. Mm. But here we've got really nice grippy bar tape, it's very comfortable. It's just another thing you don't need to change. It comes down to the package, I think, and it's rare to find a bike that we both agree we'd pull out the box and we wouldn't change a thing. Yeah, very rare to find that, and it's just one of the reasons why this is our bike of the year. So that is our bike of the year for 2020. Thank you very much to Becca for running down from 10 to one. Yep, and thanks to everyone for watching. If you've got any questions about this bike uh, or any of the bikes in this video, stick them down in the comments below. We'll see if we can get them answered for you. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this on Road TC. Cheers.